In a world where crossovers can be a massive crapshoot, whether they really slap or simply should have never been conceived by the human mind. One YouTuber will look into his past to take a look at one of his earliest attempts at fan fiction writing. Afro Riffs. Join us as we embark on a journey full of cringe and old shame going over a series of fanfics that combined a Canadian Cartoon Network program with a Japanese anime. Yes, that's actually what this guy did. Scary thing is, he wasn't the first. Look it up if you don't believe me. Anyways, watch as this aspiring artist and storyteller goes through each and every episode of this fanfic series he did to see how much it holds up compared to his more wiser, experienced times as a writer, whether he likes it or not. I wonder what horrors are in store for today's little adventure. Hey everyone, this is Afro. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you could you start with your introduction first. Okay. Um. Hey everyone, this is Afro Taku, and uh, we're finally here. We're finally starting this riffing series that I promised like two years ago, but. Things just kept coming up with real life as usual. Don't don't worry, Afro. Your 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 fans are not getting on your ass about it, so you're good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean to be fair, I mean, how big is my my YouTube fans anyway? Uh, well, having a small fan base is better than, than having a big fan base that gets on your ass about everything every single day of your life. Well, that is true. Yeah. Anyways, I think it's time for my introduction. So, hello, everybody. This is Chibi Juicy. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm just... Pro mm? yeah. There you go. On. And I'm Afro Taku, you were saying? I was about to say, like, it... Like, we are finally studying this series. Um, I, I'm just participating because um, while it's probably, like, been, like, years since I probably read things properly um <laughs> um you know i have I have not really writ like written anything that's a crossing over harhi and Ed and eddie i have crossed over um azamanga daio and super mario rpg but that's uh that's a tangent for another day yeah and boy will this little series take me back because yeah. I think it's been like 10 years since I started this. Didn't you wrote this at like when you were like 16 or 17? I think I was like... I think it was like, you know, the first... Like, I think I conceived it at like when I was 16, but then start writing it to like, I don't know, right when I turn 17. Got you. Yeah, and, well, as you heard in, like, the video announcing this, and, well, the little intro, I was actually not the first person to cross these two specific shows together. Yeah, there were, there were actually more people. Yeah. I recall three different fanfics of the same two shows and I think only two of them are still up to this day. I wonder what happened to the third one. I I guess, you know, maybe maybe the person who wrote it deleted it along with her. Got you. Got you thinking it's an old shame. Yeah, and well, I don't know, maybe just just left fanfiction.net altogether. Ah, okay. That's fair. Yeah. Anyways, enough with this uh, thing. Shall we get on to the reading? 
Yeah, I mean, it probably shouldn't stall any longer. So, we'll start things off with the little prologue, which I wrote after, like, the first, you know, um, chapter of this saga. But this is, like, what happens first chronologically. So, this is the Melancholy of Edda and Eddie prologue. Yeah, although it says right there, it says The Misadventures of Haruhi Suzumiya, Prologue Part 1. Yeah, I mean, that was the original name I had for it before changing it to The Melancholy of Ed and Eddie. Got you. <laughs> and I see your old-ass username right there by Haruhi and Ken and Fan 917. Uh, back when I did not have a good crass bet grasp at usernames and well i just picked the most generic unoriginal one yeah <laughs> it'd be like that uh characters based on characters by danny and Ant and Ant ruthie <laughs> yeah <laughs> danny and anyways you want to start with a narration okay yeah let's do that it has been four years since the events of Edda and Eddie's big picture show. The Eds were finally accept The Eds were finally accepted by the cul de sac af and by cul de sac I said cul va sac. <sighs> How did Good I job. You were you were you were seventeen. <laughs> yeah. You can easily tell. After their encounter with their brother, and by their brother, they mean Eddie's brother, 17 me. <sighs> like, even even if, if if they were related, and like, um, I think they kind of use like the wrong there, like, it's supposed to be like, um, T-H-E-I-R, not, <laughs> not this there. Yeah. I was 17, how did I miss all this stuff? And though, now, I guess you can consider their brother as foreshadowing of sorts. We'll get to that mm -hmm. later. This gives you the idea that life for them might be sweet. However, one day, Eddie was found sulking in the retro van, staring at a bobblehead doll on the dashboard. And get ready for some pretty bad imitations of the characters. <sighs> That's right, my little bobbling friend. Just bobble. That's the only thing you do in your non-existing life. Bobble with nothing better to do. Your life's just pointless. Just like mine. Edgy. Yeah, and just <laughs> way to rip off Mega Mine past me. Like I, I was thinking of Mega Mine when I wrote this. It be like that. <laughs> yeah. Just then, Ed came in unexpectedly through the passenger door. Eddie, what's up? Ed, you, <clears throat> Ed, you idiot! Can't you see I'm not in the mood? Uh, sorry, Eddie. What's wrong? <coughs> you, you okay? You sound like you're dead. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just doing... You could tell voice acting's not my forte. But... Uh, I don't know. I mean, everybody finally likes me. I'm finally in. My grades are getting better, and I've grown a few feet over the summer. So why do I feel so... melancholy? Melo... <laughs> I'm guessing that... I'm guessing that's actually on purpose, right? Yeah, because, you know, Eddie's not good with big words, and... At least that's how I remember it. And... <laughs> I guess you can consider that more foreshadowing. Hmm. Uh, I think we... Oh, uh, we can check on Double D. 
Just then, said character walked through the back doors. Don't bother, Ed. He's not home. Daddy... Daddy... Double D looked pretty depressed, too, as he lay down on the waterbed. And you can tell he's so depressed because he actually quoted Ed from a previous episode. Uh, yeah, it's like the violin episode. Ah, uh, yeah. Alright. What's with uh, you? Asked Eddie. I mean, it says what's wrong with you, but what's with you just seems like a quote he usually say. That's true. Double G just pulled a brochure out of his pocket and gave it to Ed and Eddie. Oron Academy. Lineage counts first, well, then close second. What is so explain that? this. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> You're just like crossing a lot of other animes over with Ed and Eddie. Yeah, so... Is this supposed to imply that Ed and Eddie takes place in the same universe as War on High School Walls Club? I mean, in the Japanese dub, Jimmy sounds like sounds like Honey. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Like, <laughs> but in all fairness, it's coincidental. Yeah, and I think that was before I saw those Japanese dubs of Ed and Eddie, but. We're on Academy, like, why can't I just put in, like, a random real-life Academy? Or even just make up one. <laughs> I'm... Because I know... Because I do wonder if Peach Creek is even a real thing IRL. I'm pretty sure it isn't, but, you know. Yeah, like, maybe it was based off Danny Antonucci's hometown, but other than that, like, yeah, it's about as real as... Well, the Springfield and the Simpsons. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's a long story, but here we go. Do you remember that invention I made that cured baldness? The Heron Balder 3000? I'm surprised you didn't get a lawsuit from Flint Lockwood, but that would imply that this takes place in the same universe as the Cloudy films. That's true. Yes. The one you made out of one of those hair dyeing machines you would find in a hair saloon? I don't know who says this. Yes. The one that gave me and you these awesome heads of hair? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot that you, get, you, that you gave these characters heads of ha uh, f f hair because fa from the fan art. Yeah, like, from that one user named Hot Chalk, which sadly isn't around anymore, which sucks, because her art was awesome. <sighs> yes. What about it? No question mark. Well done, me. I mean, we, we kind of just forget punctuations at points. Yeah. Well, this Japanese cop well, this Japanese company... Why am I not... Saying? Company? Company, yeah. Bought it for me from for 8,000 yen, which is pretty useless over here, may I add. <laughs> oh, Double D um, just did the job for me. And it became a huge phenomenon in Japan, being in every hair saloon and barbershop from Kyoto to Osaka to Tokyo, which caught the attention of this fancy academy, and they want me to enroll to their school. Do you know what this means? That my past self has, like, the weirdest imagination back then. Hip be like that. I mean, this was before I had, like, the... The concepts I have right now, so please cut me some slack. Mm. Yeah. I heard school over there sucks. I heard that you start school in the spring, you don't have June and July off, and the only summer vacation that you have is August. Like, a comma at between half and is. I would hate to go to school over there. <laughs> uh, Eddie, you don't know what you're about to get into. And oop. 
Yep. You really don't know what this means, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, said Ed. When Ed, like, has a better idea than Eddie, then you know. That's a rip. <laughs> it means that our trio will go down the two. You'll have to continue your journey without me. I'll bet... I'll be out of your lives. Ed and Eddie's hearts sank. You're really gonna go to... You're really gonna go to Japan and leave us behind? Asked Ed sadly. This is the last thing I want to do, Ed. Then why don't you just turn them down? Asked Eddie. I tried to, but my parents are 100% certain that this... What? 100% certain that they want me to do this. <sighs> I'm in such a bad state of melancholy right now. Melancholy? said Ed. Melancholy, another fancy name for depression. It's like... Yeah, like, it's pretty much not-so-subtle hints of what world they're about to get into. Foreshadowing is... is a slap in the face every single time in this story. Yep. And boy, I too have that as well. Wrong too. Agreed, Eddie. Why is that? Besides me going away by the beginning of September. Remember back in the day when we all... <sighs> wow, like, saying, doing this unscripted is hard. Remember back in the day when we all used to do... Remember back in the day when we all used to do scams? Well, I just realized why we did them. To scam kids out of their money to get jawbreakers? Well, that too, but ev but I ever since we, uh, but I ever since we, <sighs> well, that too, but ever since we stopped doing them, life became really dull. Dull, said Ed and Double D. Yeah, without scams, our lives are just boring, predictable, and just downright pointless. But particularly, almost everyone hated us for doing them because most of them failed and nearly got us killed last time. <sighs> Those were the days. Gosh dang, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, again, this is supposed to take place in, after Big Picture Show, and it's already, like, you know, just going against the entire point of that film like I mean I think Eddie acted that way be because he thought it would make people like him or if he just followed his brother's footsteps that would make him popular but no like he thought On a... oh, sorry he thought it gave him purpose you were saying honestly I think <laughs> What would have made this work is if the, like 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 this work is if if the this is the AU where they didn't pull that ultimate scam and you know yeah pretty that's, much that, that, to be fair we didn't know what AUs were at the time so semantics yeah AU like alternate universe yeah well. Maybe I had that concept in my head, but for some reason, I just, I just felt like following the continuity while bastardizing it at the same time. Uh, don't worry, I used to have the same issue with my my old fan fiction. Yeah. Ed noticed the state of melancholy these two were in, and thought of something to try and cheer them up. Why don't we have a sleepover at my house? I got these new movies that came in. I got Back to the Future, Aliens, and The Terminator. We can watch those. So apparently these films exist in the Ed and Eddie universe. <laughs> you, you, you really want to put, pull the movie, movie references in that, in that fan fiction, do you, Afro? Yeah, like, I mean... 
because, you know, kind of that... Well, the, the pop culture-y DreamWorks logic that referencing, making references to other films automatically makes it funny, but, I mean, I... I was thinking of, like, how the fan fiction that that influenced me make references to, like, Die Hard a few times, or, or like, Ah, so, so, <laughs> yeah. so you were not the only one making references in, in the specific crossover for Ed and Nettie and Hari, too? Pretty much. Gosh, dang. <laughs> this is, this is becoming a genre at this point. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ed. You're a true friend, said Double D. Sure, why not? Sure, why not, said Eddie. So the Eds went over to Ed's house to watch those movies Ed mentioned, and they all slept over, unaware that one night... Unaware that one night will give Eddie an inspiration that will change their lives forever. To be continued. On to part two. Oh, yeah. You know, I, did, I didn't realize how short this chapter is once you actually start reading it. Yeah, well, I mean, I just thought I'd make it short, but yeah. Okay. By the way, before we get on to the next chapter, can I just say that the, the DeviantArt's uh, layout is kind of ass? Like? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Anyways, you want to give the link to the next chapter? Because, uh, well, I got the link to the first one. I don't have the link to the next one, so... Okay. I tried posting this on fanfiction.net, but for some reason or another, I just had a hard time figuring it out. Yeah, fanfiction.net's interface is, uh, is, uh, something that's kind of, that has less to be desired. I'm gonna be real. And speaking as someone that did u use it back in the day for my own fanfiction. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, <sighs> like, <laughs> I guess it's not just me being, like, inept with websites. Yeah. Like I like like ultimately I was able to figure it out, but man was it was it a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I do I do wonder since not many people I I am gonna go on a tangent. Not many people go on the fanfiction.net anymore. But like fucking <laughs> like I, I do wonder if the interface, like, face on how to submit fanfiction for either Wattpad or Archive of Our Own are better than fanfiction.net, because if they are, then, boy, are the kids lucky today! Yeah, I... Yeah, I sure do hope so. Yeah. Anyways, tangent over. Okay. Double D awoke from his slumber. He was sleeping in his clean sleeping bag, avoiding the dirty filth in Ed's room. Ed was still snoozing on his bed, so Double D checked on Eddie, who was on the desk writing something as he assumed. It felt like he hadn't slept at all. You seem fully awake. Why is that? asked Double D. Because I thought of something, yelled Eddie in excitement. What? You know those movies we watched? <coughs> you know those movies we watched all last night? Barely, I just was... Barely, I fell asleep just at the second... Just as the second film begun. Why? Because they gave me this great idea for a scam! Say what? Follow me here. We convinced someone that the future will be taken over by aliens, and we build this time machine to get to the future and stop them. And we convinced this someone that that he has these special powers to stop the alien menace, along with three other people. And then, hold it! You want to do a scam? Yeah, why? <coughs> Doing Eddie's voice is really hard. <laughs> Maybe we need, like, a third person, like, for the next, uh, part of the recording. Yeah, pretty much, like... We'll get Tenchi next time. Good idea. <sighs> Remember the last song we did? You know... Oh, that's the... That was Double D. Remember the last one we did? You know, the one that went horribly wrong and pissed off a lot of kids, forcing us to flee to your brother for help, only to find that he was a heartless jerk who has 
it was nothing like you said about him? That scam? Well, yes, but let's not call it scamming. It's more like entertaining. Think of it like a trip to Universal Studios. Like, again with the real world references, but cheaper and in Peach Creek. Look, I bet that this scam won't cause any damage this time. Just for time... Just for time's sake. Old time's sake. Before you move to Japan, what do you say? Double D thought of this. Well, it's possible that he might go to Japan and doing a scam one last time. And doing a scam one last time would probably be a good memory. He had no choice. Because he was that easily convinced. Well, since you put it that way, fine. We'll do one more scam and no more. Deal! But there are some questions. But there are some questions I have. What will we make the time machine out of? The retro van we always hang out at! A time machine built into a vehicle. How original. What will be the doomed future? The junkyard! We'll use cardboard cutouts as aliens and... The junkyard! We'll... <sighs> we'll use cardboard cutouts as aliens, and you can make a real time machine to make sure he really buys it. Who is it we're sca entertaining? <coughs> <coughs> you, I, I, I hope you have a bottle of water with you, because you sound like you're dying! Yeah. Johnny 2x4! Okay, we have plenty of time to get the set ready before the end of August. Let's just hope nothing bad will happen. Ed then woke up from his slumber. Good morning, guys! Hey, Ed, I got a good scam up my sleeve. Wanna hear it? And so the Eds started working on their project and managed to get it done in time. Little do they know, a big event for them was right around the corner and will change their lives forever. Again, just repeating, like, the ending to the first chapter. The end. For, well, um, not the end. Like, to be continued. <laughs> it be. Well, there's a lot of things that... W <laughs> like, when you try... When you try to, like... Have it be like... Can't, like, go, go, go along with the canon, but also not this... <laughs> I'm pretty sure fans of this of the of Ed and Eddie will feel that this is kind of a slap to the face, but also it would have worked so well as an AU. I'm just gonna be real, like as something that's supposed to be a sequel to to Ed and Eddie, but also a crossover of Harhi. This is just like what the fuck, but this would have worked so well as an AU, so well. Yeah, yeah, like you. To be fair, we didn't really think about AUs that much through, so, you know. Yeah, like... I mean, I guess, like, you know... I had the idea of, like, having to make the Eds older, like... Because I think they were, like, in their preteens in the show. And, you know, the characters in Haruhi were in high school... Maybe Th that's why I did it. I mean, I, I, I guess, but I'm pretty sure that there, there are a lot of ways to go about it. But you know, again, you were like 17 around that point, and boy, this is just the beginning of what we're gonna get ourselves into. It sure is. Hmm. Anyways, I guess I could go for like, like two more chapters before we stop the recording. Okay. Yeah. Provide a link for the two chapters. Got it. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, after the two chapters, I'm gonna have dinner. Yeah. Alright. Thank you. We're at the first chapter of The Misadventures of Haruhi. A.K.A. The Melancholy Venonetti. Okay. Episode 1. Going through a, the crack in the sky. <sighs> Based on the character... Oh, yeah, the... Uh, the... Oh, yeah, the sky's broken. 
<laughs> yeah. The sky is falling. <laughs> this is a story about three boys all named Dad and an extraordinary girl they happen to meet. Ed and Eddie is now starting high school and life has gotten better for them. Everyone in the cul-de-sac respects them after their encounter with Eddie's brother. Okay, like... I got cul-de-sac almost right. And this was before I put cul-de-sac. <sighs> Although Eddie began to feel pretty bored with his life and actually longed for the days when they did scams. They've been doing well until one day Eddie sorta of went back to his old roots. Hey Double D! Are you done with the time machine yet? I can't wait much longer. <coughs> Almost done, Eddie. Patience is a virtue, you know. It appears our three friends have taken to the junkyard van. Oh, wait. Have taken the junkyard van they usually hang out in and built a time machine out of it. Why? Let's find out, shall we? Oh man, this is probably my best idea yet, Double D. Taking Johnny into the future to fight aliens from invading. Who else thought of that? Ed was crafting alien cutouts in the background. I can't wait to save the future, Eddie! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, but I don't know about this, guys. Wouldn't Johnny be asking some questions like, Where did you get the time machine? Since when do you time travel? How did you know where to go in time. Chillax, Sockhead. It's not like Johnny's going to take this seriously, right? Ed seems to... Ed seems to take it seriously right now. Double D said with a serious look. Whatever. The time machine looks great. Though I think we could have done more of... more with it. Like put glowing doors, have it run on plutonium, or test run it with a dog. <sighs> I um... That, that that could uh that could uh say it, like have people ask several questions. Yeah. <sighs> I think we ripped off enough, Eddie. Let's go, Eddie. Wait, let's go, Eddie. Like, let's go, guys. Let's save the future. It's like, why did I put Eddie? Come. Oh. <laughs> let's go, Eddie. Let's save the future. Calm down, Ed. Come on. Calm down, Ed. Come on, Double D. As repetitive as, like, saying, said this, said that, like, it, I mean, it gives you an idea who's talking. Yeah. But, Eddie, I haven't tested the flying capabilities yet. We'll test, we'll test them while we're doing the scam. But would that be considered a bad omen? Double D, start the time machine. Fine, but but don't come crying to me when we plummet to the ground. And so, Double D hid under the bed with a remote control. He stared into a little television set that was filming a camera on top of the time machine disguised as a laser gun. They set off. So let's just... Just, let's just accept the fact that Double D is smart enough to cure baldness and make a flying fan. <laughs> like, he would be a goddamn millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. He... <laughs> like, I honestly made him more like Jimmy Neutron in this case. Either Jimmy Neutron or Dexter. Yeah. I think mostly with this Dexter, given the fact that, like, both are, like, Cartoon Network properties. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Meanwhile, at Johnny's house, Johnny was just coming out the door with Plank, embracing the new day. Just think, buddy, in two weeks we're gonna start high school. Oh man, that will will that be cool? I'm going to make new friends, get straight A's, and but before Joel, Johnny could continue, the Eds were just driving in the van towards him. Towards him, Eddie entered out. Johnny, you gotta come back with me and Ed. Where? Back to the future. Eddie then raced <laughs> towards the trash can, picking out trash. Oh my god, I'm just... I was so unoriginal. <laughs> it 
be like that. Wait, what are you doing, Eddie? I need fuel. He then opened the gas pipe, putting the trash in. Quick, get in the van! Wait, Eddie, I just got out. Me and Plank were going to play a game of chess. We'll bring him along. This concerns him, too. What are you talking about? What happens to the future? It's an invasion, Johnny. I'll explain the van. Again, disregarding the events of Big Picture Show, like, Johnny was the only one who didn't see the Ed's... I don't know, just become accepted by the other kids, and 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 also didn't see Eddie just change his ways and apologize. So wouldn't he feel a little suspicious about this? Maybe. <laughs> It was just, just like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> Say that again. You're just like, ah, it's fine. I'm pretty sure Johnny would have uh, would have uh, gotten over it a couple of weeks. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that's the mindset you were had back in like. Yeah. 2010. Yeah, pretty much. Or maybe he just like hit his head and forgot everything. Probably. <laughs> As Ed, Johnny, Eddie, and Double D, hiding under a sheet, were in the time traveling van, Eddie explained him. Eddie explained to Johnny the fake future he made up. In the future, al uh, excuse me. In the future, aliens come down to Earth to ta and take over it. And the in the prophecy, what prophecy? Four chosen heroes: you, me, Plank, and Eddie. Oh, and in the prophecy, four chosen heroes, you, me, Plank, and Eddie, are given mysterious powers to stop the alien menaces. Ed continued, Golly! Yes, you need to insert 50 cents into the slot to make the time machine fly. Hurry, we're running out of road. So Johnny inserted said money into the slot, and Double D very nervously... Nervously activate the flying circuits, afraid of the impact. I hope this works," said Double D. Wings came out of, the, of each side of the van, and the wheels turned to their sides, turning into turbines. And when the van went off the ramp, it fell, but came flying back up. I did it! I made it fly! I made it fly! We're flying, Eddie. We. Indeed, Ed. Time circuit's on. Now, on to the future! But as Eddie flew back to the junkyard, something mysterious happened. But little did they know, as they were flying, a weird-looking crack in the sky appeared out of nowhere, and they flew in it. They went to the other side and saw dark skies and clouds. Wow, Plank, the future sure is dark. What the... Double D, what just happened? I I don't know. I mean, we were flying and then... Oh, look out! Said Ed, pointing to an airplane they were flying towards. Double D quickly turned the remote control and the flying van avoided the plane. I think that was the mothership, Plank! said Johnny, still clueless to what's happening. They flew up, and it was too much alti altitude, altitude for the van. The van started to spark, and then they stopped, along with the engine, and they started plummeting down and down from the sky. Mayday! Mayday, we're going down! cried Eddie. I want... I want my mommy! cried Ed. We've been hit, Plank! cried Johnny. Double D, do something! The ejector seats, Eddie! We'll escape death through those! The van started to glow red, and, lo and it looked like it would burst into flames now. Double D quickly climbed onto Ed's seat. Ed's seat. They fastened the seatbelts, and they began to push the buttons. But Ed and Double D's didn't work. Well, Plank, I guess this is the end. Women and me first, cried Eddie. He grabbed both and placed them on the seats with him and Eddie. Luckily, they got out 
they go up, go out, got out just in time. The four looked in horror as the flying time machine exploded in a school field, and safely they floated down into a bizarre looking alleyway. As Ed and Eddie and Johnny got out the seat, they were in shock. They had no idea what happened, where they are, and what will happen to them. Ed, Eddie, and Johnny all fainted in shock. Because that's how it happens, right? That's how, th that's how things turn out. Yeah, that's totally possible in real life. Yeah, that's a good way. That's a good excuse for them to feign. Oh, there's like a, a fellow lo a line. Is that... Who, whose voice would that be? It's Double D's. Fellows, uh -oh. don't give up on... Bonk. The remote landed on Double D's head, and he too feigned. I'm pretty sure that could have killed him if something landed on him from that height. Yeah. As he was closing his eyes on the ground, he heard a car coming towards them. It stopped. The door opened and... But I must stop there, or I'll spoil the next story. And by story, I mean chapter. <laughs> <sighs> so, on to the, so on to the next chapter, and this might be the last one before I stop the recording fully, because, you know, I had some shit to deal with. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And hey, there are there are girl characters here. Oh, oh good! A character for me to voice! <laughs> yeah. Chapter 2. A whole new world. So many gosh dang references. Holy shit. Uh. Anyways, I guess I'll, I'll start up. Kion! Kion, wake up! Uh. Oh gosh, that's way too high for Haruhi's voice. It's actually Kion's sister. Oh, okay, good. Ugh. Then I should go higher, then. It's a day off, Kion groaned in his sleep. But isn't it... Oh, fuck. But isn't it the day where you go, go to the city with your friends? Asked his little sister. He then got up immediately. Well, once again, today's the day I go out searching for the mysteries of the world with Haruhi Suzumiya. I wonder when she will realize that there's nothing ever going to happen in this city. Oh well, I've gotten used to it now. I got dressed and headed out the door to my bike, where I noticed the car seat laying lone in on the side of the road. That's strange. I managed to get to the train station before the others, which means I don't have to buy lunch. However, for some reason, no one has shown up. It has been a half hour since I got here. I better call Hari to see where the hell she is. But as I reached into my pocket, it rung, as if it heard me. Hello? Kion! Where are you? It was Hari. Where we usually meet, where are you? My, my old school, East Junior High! Come over here, hurry! Okay, I'm on my way. And with that, I went back to my bike and raced over. As I was pedaling my legs out, I was wondering, what could have possibly happened? Haruhi sounded very excited. Could it be that she finally found something bizarre and unworldly? And the strangest thing is where it happened. That's where I met Haruhi as a kid three years ago. I finally reached the school, looking around for Haruhi until she called out my name. She was behind the gate I remembered from three years ago. Uh, shouldn't you be doing... Uh, shouldn't you be doing something like this? Okay, I need a... <laughs> no time to ask questions! Come on! There's something you gotta see! She said, opening the gate. I parked my bike at the front, and then followed Haruhi to the field. As we walked to the top of the steps, I saw what looked like the remains of some explosion. There was this big black spot in the middle, where pieces of some vehicle were spread around. The freakiest thing was the unknown craft that the... The freakiest thing was the unknown craft la landed at the exact spot where young Haruhi made me draw that alien writing. 
Do you think it's a? Do you think it's a UFO? Pro oh, f <coughs> I'm not good at reading myself. Do you think it's a UFO? Probably, probably suffered from a turbulence and gave up. Maybe the maybe the aliens were either killed or escaped, but just in the nick of time. It looks like a van that exploded into pieces. But I assumed it flew for right. By by the sum. By the sum, it flew right in the sky. Does that sound normal? It got me there. When did you discover this? I heard it at my house. Waited, waited until morning, and <laughs> and went to check it out. We are so invest investigating this. But while she was talking, I was remembering that random car seat I saw this morning. It looked like it had something behind it. A sheet with strings that were attached to it. Like a parachute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Kion, are you listening to me? Oh yeah, sorry. We should get back to the station. The others might be wondering where we are. Don't worry. We... <laughs> Shit. Don't worry. They had alien run-ins again. Run-in, it's just you and me. Funny, we're wearing the same, same, bleh, the exact same clothes like last time. Come on, let let's ask some other witnesses and ask that, the, bleh, and ask for their side sides of the story. But before they could go, Haruhi picked up the gas pedal as a little souvenir, and just then, the parachute came out of what was left of the car seat. Kion immediately recognized it from this morning. Wait, so they- so, hold on, I just want to ask something like- So they switch from first person per, to pers perspective to third person perspective here? Yeah, I mean... I think the Edness of Haruhi Suzumiya did this too, but... Yeah. Ah, got you. Anyways, you could go on with narrating. Yeah, I'm regretting this already. Meanwhile, at an unknown location, Double D was still passed out. He finally woke up, finding himself in a dark room and heard footsteps coming this way. I'm guessing that's either Haruhi. Uh, Saruya. Uh, sorry. Are you okay? Said a voice. Oh, Mom, I just had this horrible dream. I was flying and I found myself in another time, falling to my day at death. Don't worry, you're safe here in Inishimi. Inishimi. <laughs> I'm not good with Japanese names. Don't worry, you're here. You're you're safe here in good in good old Nishin 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 Nomiya Nishinomiya. There we go. Fucking hell. Nishinomiya. I'm not good at it either. Double D soon found the lights turned on and saw the voice to and saw the voice and found the voice to be a long green haired girl, looking very surprised. Good, you're finally awake. My name is My name is Uria. What's yours? Um Edward, but my friends call me Double D. Hello, Double D. My dad found you lying in the middle of the of the road last night, along with a few other people, and and this board, and this board on with a with a face. So he took, <laughs> so he took, uh, um, <laughs> so he took all of you in my house. Wait, where are the others? So Saria showed Double D where Ed, Eddie, Johnny, and Plank were in the dining room, eating Chinese food. It's about time you woke up, said Eddie in his usual annoyed voice. Hello, Double D, greeted Ed. Your, your bald friend uh, told me all about you guys and where you come from. We were all chosen from the past. I, Plank, and Eddie are here to stop an alien race from taking over the world. <laughs> okay. Cool, but what the cool, but what does that make him? She asked, pointing to Double D. Uh, 
Our butler, answered Ed. Then the phone rang. Uh, hold that thought. And Saria went to answer it. Me and Plank will look around the house, said Johnny, leaving only the Eds in the room. So, now that you're awake... Where the heck are we? asked Eddie. I have no clue, Eddie. It's like we were... Oh, it's like we were in our place when suddenly we're in another one. I forgot to wear underwear, guys, said Eddie randomly. <sighs> Deja vu. Deja vu. I have been in this place before. Yeah. Double D pondered something that disturbed him. What if we actually did travel through time? Like I actually did made a time machine. Like... Like, I actually did invent a time machine. But wait, if we did travel through time, how did we get to Japan? Ed asked in confusion. Well, it's possible. Maybe we traveled not only through time, but also space. We've broken H.G. Wells' number one rule of time travel. But wait, said Ed. Does that mean we were right about aliens taking over the future? I don't think so. After all, Eddie did pull that story out of his rear. You know, there's another word for that saying, said Eddie. I know, but I am a man of proper English. While the Eds and their bald companion were still figuring out where they were, Saria was talking to someone on the phone, and that someone was Haruhi. She was at the cafe with Kion. Oh gosh, time for death for me. <laughs> hey, Haruhi, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great! Thanks for asking! Did you hear about the cra craft that landed in East Junior High? <clears throat> yeah, we- Yeah, weird, huh? Um, how- How are you and Kion doing? Oh, just fine! <gasps> I'm gonna die thanks to you! <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm joking, but still. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just fine! Oh, just fine! Uh, don't worry, we forgave each other. I'm guessing this is, this took place, like, after the Psy arc? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that fight we ha had at your house during the during the movie shooting is all behind us now. <laughs> don't make it sound like we're dating, said Kion. Or he then glared at him. Oh, oh good. Oh, good. I made four... I made four new friends this morning. Maybe I'll introduce them to you to you soon. Okay, good. Okay, good. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Hari. That fan we saw at the school reminded me of something I saw earlier this morning. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh! There. Oh, I didn't see any quotations. Yeah. What? She asked. Like, sorry, I forgot to put them there. I was just leaving my house to get my bike, and then I saw this lone car seat at the side of the road, and I'm getting the feeling that may be related to what just happened last night. Haruhi looked at him with amazement. Kion, that's it! The aliens must have escaped before they, before their ship exploded, and <laughs> and they must be must be in human disguises, ro roaming around the city just now. Just now. Awesome! I'm improvising. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably for the best. But that doesn't explain why their ship looked like a normal everyday van, said Kion. Well, we'll just let the- we'll just let that mystery slide. Finally, something weird ha- happened. Well- won't the others- won't the others be surprised? I doubt that Yuki will be. You know, Haruhi might have something to do with this. Maybe she wished for aliens. She did wish for Nagato after all. Hmm... But he said that to himself. <laughs> okay. It's- it's, uh, Tsuruya's time. Yeah. Hey guys! I- I think I have an idea! Said Saria. Why don't Why don't you Why don't you go with Go to school with me? What? Said Eddie. 
Sure. It'll keep your Oh, I think that's you. Uh, okay. Sure. It'll keep your identity secret. I can t introduce you. You'll see all my friends. Um, I think she's got a point, Eddie, said Double D. He then whispered something to him. Think, we're in a different time and in a different country. Life works different in Japan. However, if we if we went to a place of knowledge in Japan, we'll learn every detail that we need to know in order to survive here. We might be able to we might be here for a while. Besides, we are going to start school anyway, so why not? <sighs> Fine, said Eddie. Okay, so that okay, so, so, um, uh, Surya, it is time. <clears throat> so that's that. Starting, so starting school mo Monday, you'll you'll be oh, f <laughs> so starting Monday, you'll start going to school. And that's that. Oh boy. We need more people for this. Yeah, we do. We really do. Well, at the very least, I'm I'm pretty sure you probably need ten sheets to fill in the roles for Eddie because I know that your your throat is like dying. Yeah, and <coughs> maybe um you know another you have another one of your female friends maybe join us maybe. I don't know if any of them, like, um, uh, know about Haruhi as much as I do, so, you oh, know, okay. it's just, I'll take the bullet. <laughs> yeah, but, well, <laughs> well, I mean, now we know not to just do this by ourselves. We're gonna need a lot of help. We probably do. Yeah, but... Anyway, um, so what do you that... think? Oh boy. Well, you were 17, so I can't, can't really judge too harshly, but damn. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Although it's not really too bad as of now. Yep. But there's still plenty of time to make it that bad. Yeah, how many more chapters we we gotta do before uh, like, before we uh, completed everything with this? Let me let me check. I will I will count it later. Um, before we put in the editing of like how many chapters we had to do in text. Um, nine. Nine. <sighs> okay, so that that that's fair. <laughs> I mean, we got through four chapters today, so like, unless it's like nine more chapters. Well, yeah, it is nine more chapters from what we've read. Okay. And one of them is a very short epilogue. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, <laughs> I guess we'll, like. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how things go, uh, go out when the scheduling, though. I know that we're going to stop the recording soon, because I know that the next recording, we need Tenchi. We need Tenchi's help. With yeah, the... we really do. Um, but... Uh, like... You know... The fanfiction writers I was inspired by at least were smart enough to not continue with this because my god did I really commit to a project that didn't warrant such commitment it be like that yeah <sighs> there you had some dedication that not many fan fiction writers do now granted like your writing skills were not the best at that point, but, you know, you had commitment regardless. Yeah, and, I mean, like, is it really realistic to expect, like, Shakespearean levels of writing from, like, a high schooler? Yeah, I, I don't think we'll probably expect that sort of level of writing in, fr from a high schooler, especially a high schooler that's going through puberty. Yeah. 
Uh, anyways, anything else you want to say before we end the part one of this recording? Well, I think that's about it. Hope, hope those watching doesn't think less of me now. <laughs> and those what? And uh, I hope that everybody uh, that y'all have a good rest of the day, night, whatever, whatever the fuck time zone you're in right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, this is Chibi Jesse of YouTube. And this is Afro Taku Nine One Seven. See you later, everybody. Okay. Goodbye. See ya.